Hello and welcome to the Halloween special from BlenderDiplom.com. My name is Frederik Steinmetz and in this short video I'd just like you to see the scene setup and the most basic things that we did to create the eye morph scene. All right, so what I have here, it's not very complex. I just modeled, uh, well, parts of a shelf, not even the whole shelf, three jars. I took the hand from makehuman.org. It's an awesome software that creates humans in whole and I chopped off the hand. Right? I guess that's part of the Halloween spirit. And also, I had these frogs still from an earlier project that I did, so I guess I killed two of them, put them in a jar. And the main piece of the scene is, of course, the eye. So let's have a look at the eye. This is it. What I did in order to morph it was I took a, let's call it a healthy shape eye, and put a big multi-resolution modifier on it. I sculpted a few bumps and dents in it, but if you just use the multi-resolution modifier, there is no way that you can morph it. To my knowledge, you can store two meshes in one by using the multi-resolution modifier. There is a way to save it externally, but as far as I know, you cannot morph them, you can only save one of them, but not load them dynamically or even make a transition between them. So if you want to morph something, the more common way to do that is, let's just insert an icosphere and add our multi-resolution modifier. Of course, you don't need to add the multi-resolution modifier, but you know, usually it's easy to get things round if you subdivide it with the Catmull clark algorithm. The next thing you want to do is go into, go into sculpt mode and, you know, just do something with it. I'm going out of sculpt mode. Okay, so this is the object now. I'm just going to duplicate that. And I should have done this beforehand, but it's no problem. On this one, I'm just going to delete the multi-resolution and add it new. Subdivide it once so they have the same number of vertices. That's very important. And now I'm just going to apply the modifier on both of them. And I'm going to select both of those, press Alt G to move them to the middle of the map. So choose whatever object you want the shape key to be, and then choose the next object, which will represent the base. And if you go to the mesh options, the data objects, the data options, under shape keys, you can choose this one and join as shape. So this option will join two objects as a shape key, but it will also keep the original. So we don't need that anymore. And now we have two shapes and the new key will be named after the object from which it is created. Of course, the number of vertices has to be identical. Otherwise it won't work at all. So now if I move this, you can see I'm morphing them. And this is a smooth transition, which is very nice. Blender will even find the closest vertices for you, so you don't even have to use the same order, or you can actually rotate that thing, which would actually screw up the order of the vertices. That doesn't matter at all. Blender will sort them for you, and then you have one nice morphable object. And this is exactly what it did with the eyes. So now I have the healthy eye, and I sculpted the bad eye. Obviously, let's go back to the composition settings. Obviously, they have different materials, but that's really simple to handle. I just created the material for the healthy eye and the material for the rotten eye, and then I mix them both together. So, by factor. Now, next thing I did was I made the eyes follow the camera. And there's a pretty standard way to do that in Blender. All I need to do is select all the eyes. There you go. And then make sure to shift click on the camera because that way the camera is the active object. And with Control T, you can add a track to constraint to all of them. Unfortunately, 
as you can see they don't look in the right direction if i switch uh, this is actually already switched to local you can see they're looking in the y direction but the local direction we want to track to the camera is actually the x so we just need to choose x you can also choose that once and copy the settings by using let's just do this um copy you can copy a lot of things these days copy constraints to selected objects so now they're all pointing towards the camera if i move the camera you can see the eyes are following it so that's pretty cool so that's actually working well if i look through the camera i'm pressing g that's actually not the active camera i accidentally duplicated it but well it works so we can actually just make this the active camera well now if we had a painting those eyes would follow the camera wherever you go and not just seemingly you could now go ahead and animate this we already have a slight camera animation just to uh, kind of let's call it prove that the eyes are actually following the camera and we could now go ahead and animate the influence of the track to constraint let's just make this a much more extreme situation in this one you can see it best if i decrease the influence you can see the old rotation basically well, there's a, the difference between the old rotation or the original rotation and the tracked rotation is being multiplied by the influence, meaning that with the influence of zero, of course, it's the same thing as if I have it turned off. And with the influence of 0.5, we have 50% rotation towards the camera. So we can just use this slider in order to make the eyes rotate towards the camera and a lot of people like doing this by hand it's only five eyes so it's fine and you can offset them slightly and most animations look more natural if you offset them slightly meaning if there's multiple things happening in your scene you should not make them all start happening at the same time like the transition from rotten to healthy the transition of the material and the transition of rotating towards the camera that should not all start at the same time it makes it more organic a more natural feeling to it but of course that comes with the downside of having a lot of keyframes and as soon as you have keyframes on multiple objects it becomes kind of hard to do changes later on if you're not happy with something or even if you just want to delay the entire animation for 100 frames so you can do something in the beginning can be fairly tedious so what i'm going to show you in the next part is how to animate the entire thing that includes the rotation of the eyes it includes the transition of the material and also the shape keys with just a couple of nodes and of course if animation and nodes are in the same sentence often people are talking about the animation nodes which is a great add-on by Jacques Lucas. we've already introduced it in blender and this is basically what the finished scene will look like this tree drives the entire animation this part drives the rotation of the objects this one drives the morph and this one drives the material so if you're interested in how to do that Go ahead and watch the next part of our Halloween tutorial as well.